Hello world, my name is Allison Tres. I'm a 21 year old college student from Ohio and I just finished watching a film the other week called Console Wars. Now Console War holds a special place in my heart. You see, back in 2014, when I was in eighth grade, I was told I could choose any book to read for my English essay. Well, naturally, as a video game lover, the first thing I did was type in video game book into Google and I found a novel called Console Wars, and I loved it. Fast forward to today, and I find out that that novel I loved all those years ago was now available in documentary form. And uh, here we are today. Console Wars is a 2020 documentary film based on the pseudo-biography of the same name. Now, the film was directed by Blake J. Harris and Jonah Tullis, with the novel being written by Blake J. Harris himself. The film and the novel both focus in on Sega's rise and ultimate fall in the video game home market during the 90s, specifically Sega's rivalry with Nintendo. Now, I say pseudo-biography, but that's not an actual term. What I mean is that the film and the novel, in telling Sega's success, seem to focus in on one man who seemed to make all the difference in Sega's success in the United States, Tom Klinzinski. All that aside, I'm here to tell you how Console Wars expertly sets up this classic underdog dynamic in the first 10 minutes of the film. Now, if you're interested, I wrote a whole paper going over how it does this in much greater detail. The link's in the description. The film begins with an introduction to video games that any lay person could follow. Scenes of the first video games, I'm talking Pong, uh, Space Invaders, Pac-Man, then Donkey Kong, and then slowly, the montage seems to solely focus on Nintendo. They create an almost momentum-like feeling, showing how successful Nintendo was with their first home console, Nintendo Entertainment System, or the NES. Clips of children yelling with excitement, uh, news clips of reporters giving out facts of Nintendo's success, and even showing regular people talking about how hard it is to get their hands on a Nintendo Entertainment System, all coming together when former Nintendo spokesman Howard Phillips says, We were the video game industry. Within the first four minutes, Harris and Toolis imprint onto the user that Nintendo wasn't just a massive video game company, but that they were the only massive video game company. They paint Nintendo as top dogs for their appeal to logos, or a viewer's sense of logic, by not only giving out hard facts about Nintendo's success, but giving a view to how the world looked like at that time, and how people were reacting. Harris and Toolis use the next four minutes to give Sega the complete opposite introduction. Sega, in contrast to Nintendo, is given a very human introduction. First, they introduce Sega employee uh, Shinobu Toyota, who, in an interview, explains that he used to live outside a comfort in hotel room when he first started working at Sega. Harris and Toolis even use uh, a hotel room as the location for Toyota's interview, having shots of Toyota walking up and down the halls of that comfort inn. Harris and Toolis are using this story in that comfort inn to help establish that Sega's employees, and, and by extension, the company itself, uh, were not that well off or that successful to begin with. Then Tom Klinzinski is introduced. In Tom's first shot, he is called the Performer of Miracles. Harris and Toolis focus in on how he himself was an underdog in many of the previous companies he had been with and how he had, against all odds, created massive success after massive success in the toy industry before joining Sega. Hinting, of course, that he would replicate the same kind of underdog story for Sega themselves. Harris and Toolis, in their choice, introduced Sega with their employees and not with news clips, facts, and statistics about the company's success, shows that they're using pathos to appeal to the viewer's emotions, to allow the viewer to more closely connect to Sega. Sega is introduced with their employees' personal stories, while Nintendo, in contrast, is introduced with a success montage. Because of that, 
Toulouse and Harris established that Sega were the underdogs and Nintendo the top dogs within the first 10 minutes of the documentary. That's all for my analysis of console wars. My name is Alex Contreras and goodbye world.